Hi everyone, Vega here, and in today's video we're going to be looking at planetary migration and the Triton. Where did it come from? So let's get to it. So here we can see a depiction of the Neptunian system with Neptune in the centre and Triton its largest moon. We can see it orbiting here in a retrograde fashion at around 354,000 kilometres, which is roughly equivalent to the Earth and Moon distance. But why does Triton orbit in such a strange way, as opposed to the other satellites of Neptune like Larissa, Prote or, or Nereid? Let's find out. First of all, we probably need to understand a little bit about planetary migration and that the fact that we believe that Neptune may have migrated out to the distance it was. In the early solar system, we can see here the four gas giants formed in, the, in circular orbits with a Kuiper belt of objects that was much closer in. Over time, these objects, the planetesimals, tugged at, at the orbits of each gas giant until eventually Saturn and Jupiter found a resonance where Jupiter orbited twice for every once that Saturn went round. This meant that Uranus and Neptune were skewed and thrown out of their orbits. In fact, Neptune even went out and surpassed the orbit of Uranus, forming this orbit here, both skewed into the Kuiper belt, which itself became skewed out into the old solar system, until eventually the four bodies found their own resonance and made a stable system. But what, how does this explain Triton? Let's have a look. Well, first of all, imagine Neptune in its encounter with Uranus. Perhaps the two bodies became close or entangled at some point. Maybe Triton itself was, an, was the moon of Uranus. How did Uranus get its tilt? Perhaps it's from its encounter with Neptune. We just don't know. What we do know is that it would have happened in a much closer environment in the solar system maybe at 10 or 15, 20 astronomical units. Or alternatively, maybe Triton was an inner solar system planetesimal involved in the early period bombardment while its surface melted in lava and hot substances. Perhaps its orbit was picked up by Venus or, or Earth and flung out into the outer solar system later to be captured by Neptune. This gaseous atmosphere sizzling on the surface. As we can see, maybe those theories are incorrect. Perhaps Triton was formed with Neptune. It, as it Neptune migrated out into the outer solar system, as we can see depicted here, it's the flowing water on the surface of Triton as it became more and more distant, turned to ice and snow, and eventually even to harder rock. The distance from the sun would flowing water ever be seen again on the surface of Triton? Or maybe those theories are all wrong. Maybe Triton is a captured Kuiper belt object. But if it is, why can't we see the red tholins that should have built up over millions of years by cosmic ray bombardment? Perhaps it that once Titan was captured by Neptune, tidal forces inside woke it up, providing plumes of nitrogen gas and replenishing the surface. The truth is, we just don't know where Triton came from. So, what is the future for this beautiful moon? Here we can see a depiction. The spaceship Isa de Battle approaches Triton's atmosphere. Its advanced fusion drive having propelled it to 3 million kilometers an hour, or 0 0.002 of light speed having spent a 90-day journey with a stopover at Saturn's moon Titan. Here we can see it flying, coming in towards land through Triton's atmosphere of 14 million picobars. By Earth's standards, not very thick, but certainly by solar system standards, one of the thickest in the area. Indeed, only two or three other moons contain an atmosphere of such thickness. Saturn's moon Titan, and perhaps Uranus's moon Titania, future, however, of Titan doesn't look so rosy. Over millions and billions of years, eventually its orbit will decay to the point where it reaches for gas giants Roche limit and its surface will be torn and destroyed. Triton will be no more and just a ring system around the beautiful distant planet of Neptune.
Thank you for watching. Don't forget if you've enjoyed the video to add a like or a share because it does help me out quite a lot. In next week's video we'll be looking at the next in our brightest star series of Arcturus, the Red Baron. So stay, stay tuned and I'll see you on that one.